This training video covers inspection of concrete foundations and breakaway transformer bases that support luminaires, roadside flashing beacons, and pedestrian crosswalk signals. Shoe base poles, typically mounted on bridge brackets and traffic barriers, are excluded. This video covers the following topics, concrete foundations. This section reviews important details of concrete foundations that support light poles. Breakaway transformer bases for light poles. This section covers breakaway bases typically used with TxDOT roadway light poles, breakaway pedestal pole bases, and concrete foundations. These are used to support roadside flashing beacons, pedestrian crosswalk buttons, and signals. For these types of installations, safety is enhanced with the breakaway design's benefits. Summary and Inspector's Checklist. This final segment provides a listing of items to be addressed during the inspection. The Texas Department of Transportation requires illumination systems be installed in accordance with the project's plans and specifications. Many of the roadway illumination system construction details are found on the RID standards sheets. The most current edition of these and other standards sheets may be found on TxDOT's website. Purpose of Inspections Inspections are undertaken at various times during highway construction to confirm that the function, safety, and reliability of the installation may be achieved throughout the project's designed life. Before field inspection activities begin, the specific job's documentation should be reviewed for details relevant to the project. The engineer or inspector should review the project's plan sheets to ensure that the size, strength, and type of materials are correct for the particular project. Conflicts concerning materials and methods should be investigated and resolved before the project begins. Concrete Foundations as construction progresses, locations for the light poles are physically located and marked as indicated on the plans. Materials are distributed to various staging locations and the contractor's construction equipment is moved into working position. Safety standards prohibit the drill truck's elevated mast from being positioned closer than 10 feet from any energized overhead electrical conductor. Buried electrical lines, gas lines, water lines, drainage, and petroleum pipelines are frequently located underground in the right-of-way alongside of the roadway. It is the contractor's responsibility to locate all of these potential hidden dangers before any excavations. A drilled shaft foundation is used to support light poles and pedestal poles. A large auger drill is used to excavate the vertical hole, which will then be reinforced with steel and filled with concrete. Due to extensive design options and the number of active projects requiring inspection, the inspector will benefit from having a set of the specific jobs, plans, and TxDOT's standards specification book readily available for reference. Standard roadway lighting foundations are 30 inches in diameter. Drill shaft depths are specified as being 6, 8, or 10 feet in depth. The rebar design from the RID standard uses six number four bars with a number three spiral at a six inch pitch with two flat turns at the top and bottom of the cage. The anchor bolt circle options for T-base poles are 14 inches or 17 and one quarter inches in diameter. The length of the light pole is a major factor that influences the size and length of the anchor bolts. A pole shorter than 40 feet requires anchor bolts that are one inch in diameter and 30 inches long. Longer poles require bolts that are one and a quarter inches in diameter and 30 inches long. Anchor bolts should be held in the correct position and properly spaced during concrete placement, so the pole base can be correctly aligned with the roadway and mated with the foundation's bolts. This is facilitated by the use of two large metal templates, 
The bolt cage assembly should be secured to the rebar cage using several wraps of rebar tie wire. When the bolts, nuts, upper and lower templates are assembled as a unit, it is called the bolt cage assembly. Before placement of concrete, the position of the bolt cage assembly should be confirmed as being properly centered and the foundation anchor bolts should be checked using a level to confirm that they are plumb. If the bolts are not plumb, when the nuts are tightened down, the bolts may bend and compromise their structural integrity. Foundation anchor bolts are made of tempered steel to give them the designed strength required during major events such as vehicular impact and high wind conditions. Attempts to bend these bolts to fit a pole base should not be allowed. Once the bolts have been bent by even a small amount, the steel loses much of its vital strength. Holes of the correct size and spacing are drilled into the templates. Two nuts fasten the bottom of each anchor bolt to the 3 8 inch thick lower template. The upper template is thinner at a quarter inch thick and has holes drilled into it at the correct spacing to hold the top of each anchor bolt with two nuts. The top two nuts and templates are set above the top of the concrete foundation and will be removed to attach the pole to the base. A hex nut is threaded onto each bolt and the upper template is slipped over each bolt and a final hex nut is threaded onto each of the bolts and tightened wrench tight, sandwiching the upper template between the two top nuts. The inspector should confirm that the bolt cage is properly assembled using the correct bolt size, length, and template size to produce the correct bolt circle and spacing. Where a breakaway base is used, plans require that the top of the bolts extend no more than 4 inches above the concrete foundation. Two bolts should be positioned within 2 degrees of parallel of the center line of the roadway. This will ensure the pole is oriented correctly to the roadway. The benefits of the safety lighting system are significantly reduced if the luminaire arm is not perpendicular to the roadway. A minimum of two conduits of the correct size and material are to be properly positioned in each light pole foundation, even if only one is currently needed. All conduits must be temporarily sealed as soon as they are installed, and the seal checked and repaired as necessary before concrete is poured. Duct tape providing a temporary seal during the construction is allowed. However, it is not to be used as a substitute for a permanent conduit seal after the conductors are installed or for empty spare conduits. As shown on RID 2 foundation detail, the conduit should be placed two inches apart as measured from the center line of the foundation to allow bell end fittings for PVC conduit and the grounding bushings for rigid metal conduit to be properly fitted. To ensure a good grounding connection, Two UL-listed mechanical connectors rated for embedment in concrete and a short 6 AUG bare stranded bonding jumper are required in the foundation of all light poles. Before concrete placement, the inspector should confirm that the two mechanical connectors and the bonding jumper are properly placed. Note 10 on RID 2 states, Bond the anchor bolt to the rebar cage with a number 6 bare stranded copper conductor. Use listed mechanical connectors rated for embedment in concrete. The bonded steel in the foundation creates a concrete encased grounding electrode, which replaces the ground rod. Breakaway transformer bases for light poles. A breakaway transformer base supporting a light pole can enhance safety significantly. If an errant vehicle strikes the pole, the base fractures and the pole gives way to limit injury to vehicle occupants. This is a complex engineering design. There are several conditions that must be met for this breakaway base to function as designed. To function properly, the electrical conductors must separate safely to prevent the hazard of exposed and energized electrical conductors. After breakaway, the remaining bolts and conduits must not interfere with the movement of the pole or snag the bottom of the vehicle. The pole, after being impacted, falls to the ground after the vehicle passes underneath it, as seen here. The finished top of a concrete foundation supporting a breakaway base should be flush with the finished grade. This will allow an errant vehicle to clear the foundation and anchor bolts 
and continue moving until it comes to a stop. Note that the foundations should not be placed on grades with a four slope greater than six to one. Also note the special riprap treatment required on slopes. Detail AA of RID 2 shows that the edge of the foundation farthest from the roadway should be flush with grade. If either of these requirements cannot be met, the engineer should be consulted for a remedy to the problem. Many times, some minor regrading of the area will take care of the issue. TxDOT Standard RID 2, note number 2, states, Erect roadway illumination assembly poles plumb and true. Form and level the top 6 inches of the foundation so the pole will be plumb. Use leveling nuts to plumb shoe base poles. Do not use shims or leveling nuts under transformer bases. Do not grout between base plate and the foundation. The corners of the breakaway base and the concrete foundation should make full contact with the surface of the concrete foundation. There should be a gap present where the sidewalls meet the concrete foundation to allow water to escape. Deviations from corner to corner can result in premature failure of a breakaway base. The concrete foundation is required to be formed level so that the pole will stand plumb, allowing correct illumination to cover traveled lanes. The maximum allowable gap under one corner is only one-eighth of an inch before the nuts are tightened. Deviations greater than this may cause an internal fracture due to excessive twisting when the foundation bolts are properly torqued. This type of fracture may not initially be visible. The concrete under a base's corner may be either too high or too low. If the deviation is 1 16th of an inch or less, torquing the bolts to 150 foot-pounds as per manufacturer specifications should result in full face contact without excessive flexing of the breakaway base. As shown on RID 1 starting at note number 8, where the amount of corner deviation is more than 1 16th of an inch and up to the maximum of 1 8th of an inch, the foundation anchor bolts may be torqued incrementally until full face contact between the corners of the transformer base and the concrete occur or 250 foot-pounds, whichever occurs first. Excessive flexing of the base and structural failure may occur if the gap is greater than the maximum allowable deviation of one-eighth of an inch. The breakaway base should be properly secured to the foundation before the pole is attached to it. Before installing the base, the foundation anchor bolt should be cleaned of all foreign material and coated with an electrically conductive thread lubricant. The nuts are run down the bolts, then removed and recoated. The base is set on the concrete foundation, and one half inch thick washers are slipped over all four bolts. Then, each nut is torqued to 150 foot pounds. When the gap caused by a high or low spot is not closed, this torque can be increased to 250 foot pounds. With the base secured to the foundation, with all four corners touching the concrete, an accurate level should be placed and centered across the top in two opposite directions to confirm that the base is level. As the work progresses, the contractor will rig the pole for lifting and attachment to the breakaway base. The proper order of assembly must be followed by assembling the bolts and particularly the one half inch thick washers in the proper position. The bolts, nuts, and washers are to be coated with an electrically conductive thread lubricant. With the pole aligned with the base, a bolt with a half inch thick washer is inserted threads up from inside the T-base through the bolt holes and the pole's base plate. The washers are then slipped over the bolt's threads and the nuts turned down hand tight. A calibrated torque wrench is then used to torque the bolts to 150 foot-pounds. Either the bolt or the nut may be rotated, but not both. As is necessary to read the torque wrench scale, it will be necessary to place the wrench on the nut while holding the bolt's head in place inside the transformer base. When the pole has been properly secured to its foundation, it should be confirmed that it is erected plumb and the transformer base is level. Since leveling shims are not allowed on breakaway illumination poles, the only method of plumbing the pole is by leveling the concrete foundation. This is much more easily done when the concrete foundation is poured. 
Requiring contractors to level faulty foundations by grinding should be sufficient to remind them to pay close attention to this critical element when pouring the concrete. Breakaway Pedestal Pole Bases and Concrete Foundations In this segment, we will review the foundation and breakaway base details for pedestal-type poles used for flashing beacons and other pedestrian equipment. For this stage of the inspection, the inspector will need TxDOT's RFBA and TSFD standards sheet. The requirements for conduits, concrete encased grounding electrodes, and conductors cataloged earlier in this video also apply to pedestal pole breakaway bases and their concrete foundations. This type of foundation is drilled 24 inches in diameter and to the depth called for on the plans. For a 24 inch diameter foundation, the rebar steel is to be four number five bars with a number two spiral pitch at 12 inches. Length is to be as called for on the project's plans. The bolts are three fourths of an inch in diameter by 18 inches long with one end formed in an L shape. A lower template is not used. The upper ends of the bolts are held in position by a steel template that results in a bolt circle of 12 and 3 quarter inches. One quarter to one half of an inch of the unthreaded bolt shank should be visible above the finished concrete foundation. To ensure good grounding and bonding, a UL listed 5 8 inch by 8 foot long copper clad ground rod is required to be installed. When installed, only 2 inches of the ground rod should protrude out of the finished surface of the concrete. When a pedestal pole is used for solar powered flashing beacons, a ground rod is not required. The specific plans for the job will show the size and number of conduits to be placed in the foundation. The inspector should consult the plans for each foundation. ASHTO requirements specify that when the base breaks, nothing is left standing higher than 4 inches. This mandates that the bolts and conduits not be allowed to extend more than 4 inches out of the finished concrete foundation. The RFBA standards sheets allow the top of these foundations to be up to one half inch above finished grade. The concrete's horizontal surface should be level and finished in a neat and workmanlike manner. The pole used for support of flashing beacons may be one of three types. It can be a special Schedule 40 pipe made of aluminum alloy number 6061T6. The correct aluminum pipe will have the alloy numbers stamped into it. Schedule 40 steel pipe and rigid metal conduit are the other two types of pipes that can be used. Rigid aluminum conduit cannot be used since it doesn't have the strength needed. As the pole is threaded into the base, not all the pipe threads need to be threaded into the base. However, all the base threads should have pole threads in contact with them. This is necessary to meet the design level of strength. Using either a pipe wrench on conduit or a strap wrench on a polished aluminum pole with or without an extension, the contractor should make sure all base threads have been mated with pole threads. In some districts, a reinforcing collar is required to be applied to this joint due to frequent high wind conditions. Department Materials Specifications DMS 11140 requires that the letters ASHTO, as seen here, be stamped in the top of the screw top base. A one-half inch diameter threaded hole is required for a tank ground type fitting that is to be installed in the base, and a non-metallic door should be installed and secured to the base. Summary Roadway illumination foundations should be located as indicated on the plans. Concrete foundations should have the correct reinforcing steel, bolts, conduits, and concrete encased grounding electrodes properly installed. For breakaway bases to develop the needed strength, deviations in the concrete must be minimized. For the lighting fixtures to illuminate the traveled lane correctly, the bolts should be properly aligned with roadway and the foundation top formed level. For safety, the foundation should be level with the finished grade. Conduits and bolts should not project more than 4 inches. While deviations of up to 1 8 of an inch are allowed in the concrete, the corners of the breakaway base must make full face contact. Corner gaps may be closed by torquing the bolts from 150 to a maximum of 250 foot-pounds. 
pedestal-type screw-top breakaway bases used for flashing beacons and crosswalk buttons and signals require L-shaped bolts, but not lower templates. The top of the concrete may be as much as one-half inches above finished grade. Throughout the inspection process, the spec book and standard sheets, along with the job's plans, should be consulted. Inspector's Checklist the following is a list of the essential items you should check during inspections of lighting pole foundations. This is not a complete list. It includes only items particular to illumination and electrical work. See the specifications book and text.standard standard sheets for details concerning the drill shaft, concrete, and rebar. The poles have been correctly located. Drill shafts are the correct size and depth. The correct number and sizes of reinforcing steel bars have been used. Conduits are the correct number, type, and set to the correct height and seal. The concrete encased grounding electrode or correct ground rod has been properly installed. Top of the foundation is flush with finished grade. Concrete foundation top is formed level. Bolts are set to the correct height. An approved base has been used. Eight one-half inch thick washers installed. Bolts, nuts, and washers have been cleaned and conductive lubricant applied. The transformer base is set properly and is level. All four corners of the transformer base are touching the finished foundation. Bolts are torqued correctly. Tank ground fitting has been installed. Door is on and secured. Pole is set plumb. Pole is the correct type. Foundation is flush with final finished grade. Fixtures are the correct type, size, and number. Pedestal pole bases specific items. An approved base has been used. The base is properly set. Bolts have been properly torqued. Tank ground fitting has been installed. The pole is made of specified material. The pole is fully threaded into the base. Only the major items of light poles, pedestal poles, and their concrete foundations have been covered in this video. Videos and checklists are aids, not replacements for an inspector who strives for professional excellence. A list of pre-approved electrical materials that can be used on a TxDOT project can be found on the TxDOT website. The list is titled Roadway Illumination and Electrical Supplies and is updated regularly. Thank you.